What's going on, everyone? It's Adrian from Draft Time, and welcome to another NBA FanDuel strategy and picks video. Now, in this video, I'm going to go over tonight's slate. Uh, it's December 19th, and we got a four-game slate tonight. Now, perhaps the biggest news of the night is no Victor Wembanyama for the Spurs. Now, that means there's going to be a lot more value to be had in the slate uh, and a lot more options to choose from. And another big piece of news is you got the return of John Morant, so that does impact things from a DFS perspective. Now, before I get into it, I want to go over some key questionable guys uh, to keep an eye out for. You got Chris Paul for the Warriors, and then you got Shaden Sharp for the Blazers. So you want to keep an eye out for those guys. So let's go and take a look at the top value guys for the slate. So let's go ahead and let's sort this by value. And right off the bat, you see Zach Collins uh, is the number one value pick with a value of over seven fantasy points per thousand dollars. Um, and then you got Devin Vassal. And that's because there's no Victor Wembanyama for the Spurs. And I'll go more in depth uh, on that later on. And then the next two value picks, you've got are Giannis and Lillard. Um, and that's because they're going against the Spurs, who have one of the worst teams uh, defensively. Now, before I go into uh, all of the games, I want to show you a little sleeper pick that I like tonight. And that's going to be Sandro. And I don't even know how to say his last name. Mamuka Leshavi. Um, he's minimum price, $3,500. And what I would do... What I would consider doing is fading Zach Collins and locking in Sa Sandro uh, just in case Zach Collins doesn't have a good game uh, and they end up going with Sandro instead. Or if the game's a blowout and Sandro gets a ton of fourth quarter minutes, um, because although I like Zach Collins as a value pick and he's probably going to get a lot of minutes, uh, he's been not getting that many minutes lately. So there is a little bit of, of risk there. Um that this trend continues but anyways let's go ahead and let's start looking at some of these games the first game you got on the slate is you got memphis at new orleans okay so let's take a look at memphis uh for memphis like i mentioned earlier um jaw looks to make his season debut after serving that suspension now what does that do from a dfs perspective well that means all these other guys uh are super expensive because they're all all of their prices reflect uh, the season they've been having with no Ja Morant. So Desmond Bain at $8,300, that's really expensive. Jared Jackson, $8,400. I mean, that's really expensive. Really, the only guys uh, who are worth picking up are going to be Biombo if he does end up playing, which he's questionable, at $4,500. He had a pretty game, pretty good game last game. Uh, he dropped 25.3 fantasy points. He played 33.3 minutes. And then you got uh, Vince Williams uh, is worth playing at $4,700. Because you got no, uh, you basically are pretty thin at the guard spot. Uh, you got Ja coming back, but you got no Derrick Rose, no, no Luke Kennard, uh, and no Marcus Smart. So uh, he's really the only guy worth picking up. Now, whether or not you want to pick up Ja Morant, that's up to you. He's $9,500, so he's not exactly cheap. Um, and, you know, I'm not exactly sure how how good his condition is going to be and whether or not he's going to be uh, on on a snap count. So uh, I'd, I'd be cautious of locking in John Morant. I mean, maybe you want to lock him into one or two lineups simply because he's John Morant and he could give you, you know, 60 plus, but I'm not going to do it personally. Now, moving on to New Orleans, uh, you got Zion and Ingram both priced in the 7,000s, which uh, inevitably, inevitably is going to cause them to get picked up by a bunch of lineup optimizers. Now, with that being said, if I'm trying to cash high in a GPP, I'm not picking these two guys up together. Here's an interesting piece of information. These two players are actually negatively correlated. When Ingram scores 40 plus, Zion averages 35.4 fantasy points per game, which is well below his average. And when Zion scores 40 plus, Ingram averages 32.7 points per game, which is well below his average. Now, all season long, they haven't both scored 40 plus fantasy points in the same game. Now, Jonas Valanciunas is on a nice little stretch, uh, which is why he's $8,000, but I think that's a little bit too expensive for him. CJ McCollum at $7,700, that's too expensive for him. Um, he doesn't really have that high of a ceiling. There's not too many times he scored 50-plus this season. Actually, he's only scored 50-plus once all season long. Now, Najee Marshall is questionable, so if he ends up missing the game, uh, expect a lot of Herbert Jones and Trey Murphy. And actually, Herbert Jones is cheaper than Trey Murphy, so I'd expect him to get picked up in a lot of optimizers. Uh, maybe you want to fade him because you think he's going to be heavily owned. But anyways, let's go on to the next game. 
you got the Spurs at the Bucks. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Spurs. Now, this game is going to have a lot of action because you got the Spurs who have no women, Yana, and then you got the Bucks going up against the Spurs who are one of the worst teams defensively and allow uh, the third most fantasy points to opposing teams. So for the Spurs, you got Vassell, uh, who's 6,500. He's a pretty good value pick. I mean, he's going to be their primary guy with no women, Yana, their primary scorer. So expect him to be pretty heavily owned. You got Zach Collins, who's going to be very heavily owned for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Now, if you look at Zach Collins, um, his minutes have gone down. He he started off the, the season pretty hot, uh, but over the last five games, he's averaging just 16.5 fantasy points, and he's averaging around 16 minutes per game. And that's because the Spurs have been going small with Weminyana as their only big man. So that that they might continue to do that tonight, but instead of Weminyana, you got Zach Collins as their only big man. So that's the reason why he's projected to score so many points uh, and why he's going to be very heavily owned. But like I said earlier, if you want to hedge that, you could fade Zach Collins and you could lock in some Sandro, um, who is minimum priced. So I really like that angle. Now, Keldon Johnson, um, he's going to be pretty heavily owned uh, with no women, Yana. But $7,000 is pretty expensive. I don't really see that much upside in him. Uh, but I am going to have him in a few lineups. Now, with Sohan, he's only $5,500. Um, so he's going to get picked up by a ton of optimizers, especially with no women, Yana. There's going to be a lot of points, rebounds to go to go around. And Sohan is a pretty pretty decent all-around player. He gets points, rebounds, assists. Uh, everyone else is a little bit too expensive. So those are really the only guys worth picking up. Now, what I would do is I'd, I'd mess around with different combinations of three Spurs players. And the reason I say three Spurs players is because typically in a four game slate, you don't have any more than, than three players from the same team in the winning lineup. Uh, that's been a, a little trend that I've observed. So no more than three players from the Spurs. I'd mix around some of these players, um, you know, maybe some Vassell, uh, Sohan, and Collins. And then maybe in some of the other lineups, you fade Vassell and you get some Keldon Johnson, Collins, and Sohan. Uh, maybe you fade Zach Collins for Sandro and pick up two other Spurs players. So that's going to be what I end up doing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the Bucks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's some pretty big value with Giannis and Dame. Uh, however, since this game has some blowout potential, I'd be cautious with these guys. Now, I actually want to say something about blowouts. You would think that in blowouts, people like Giannis uh, finish below their their averages uh, because they don't play the fourth quarter, but that's actually not the case. Um, in most blowouts, these guys usually finish slightly above their averages. However, they very rarely, you know, they have they very rarely have those really big games. You know the type of game where they finish with a ridiculous amount of points. So, in a blowout, uh, Giannis isn't going to give you 80, but he could easily give you around 65, 64 points, which is solid. But it's probably gonna, not going to make him end up in the winning GPP lineup. Now, besides Giannis and Dame, the only other guy worth worth picking up is Bobby Portis because he's only 5,600 and um, he could e easily give you a 40 point game. Every now and then, Bobby Portis does that. Okay, now let's take a look at the next game. You got Phoenix at Portland. So let's take a look at Phoenix. Now for Phoenix, you got no Bradley Beal. They're going to up against Portland, who's pretty bad, bad at giving up fantasy points. They give up the eighth most fantasy points to opposing team. Now you got Nurkic. Uh, he's worth picking up in a few lineups, considering the Blazers give up the third most fantasy points to opposing centers. Uh, and he could easily give you 50 plus while being under $8,000. Uh, plus, there's, you know, the re revenge game factor going back to Portland. Is that going to play a factor or not? Maybe. I don't know. Then you got Durant at $10,000, who's definitely worth picking up at that price in a few because he could actually end up outscoring uh, Giannis tonight uh, if that game's a blowout. Kevin Durant being, you know, nearly $2,000 cheaper, that's that will be pretty big if he outscores Giannis and you fade Giannis for Durant. Uh, then you got Devin Booker, 10200 He's worth picking up in a few, even though, you know, 10200 is isn't exactly a good price for him. Uh, he could easily give you 60 points. Um, but besides that, I really don't see anyone worth picking up. You know, Grayson Allen, 5700 he's priced right. Eric Gordon is priced right at $5,200. Now, Nasir Little at 4100 
he's going to end up in some lineups, uh, you know, just because he's going to get picked up by the optimizer because he's been getting pretty big minutes. Uh, you look at his last three games, you know, 23, 25, and 27 minutes, and he's only $4,100. So he might fill some gaps there there and end up getting picked up by some optimizers. But I really don't see that much upside there. Now for Portland, you got Shaden Sharp, who's questionable. If he if he misses the game, I really like Tumani Kamara at $4,800. Um, he might be worth picking up if Shaden Sharp ends up missing the game. But really, I really don't see that much value in anyone else, even if Shaden Sharp ends up missing the game. But you could always pick up Anthony Simons and Jeremy Grant in a few lineups with them being under $8,000 and having the ability to score 50 plus, uh, you know, you have to pick them up. But similar to Zion and Ingram, I would have picked, I, I would never pick the two of them up together. But let's go ahead and take a look at the next game. You got Boston at Golden State. Now for, for Boston, Porzingis is actually doubtful. And if he ends up missing the game, expect everyone to be all over Al Horford at $5,400 because they really don't have any other big men. Although this guy right here, Nimaez Keita, had a pretty decent game last game uh, with no Porzingis. He dropped 21 fantasy points, and he, and he was only $3,500. He was min-priced. Now he's $3,800, so not min-priced, but still uh, might be worth picking up if there's no Porzingis. Maybe fade Horford for, for uh, Keita. You could always pick up Tatum and Brown just because they always have the ability to give you, you know, 50 plus, but I'm not going crazy with either of these guys. Now, Drew Holiday, um, he's under $7,000, but he hasn't been doing that well recently, averaging, you know, 28.82 points per game in his last five games. So I'm not going crazy with Drew Holiday. Maybe he's worth picking up in one lineup because this is a big game for him, uh, Garden, Steph Curry. But uh, so not much value in any of these other Celtics players. But let's go ahead and take a look at the last team we're going to look at, and that's going to be Golden State. And like I mentioned earlier, you got you got no Chris or, or Chris Paul is questionable. So if he does end up missing the game, uh, expect Steph Curry, his ownership to go up a lot uh, at eighty seven hundred dollars. Now, if Chris Paul does play the game, I really like Steph Curry as kind of a, a sleeper pick because everyone's going to be all over Dame going to get against the the Spurs, but. Steph Curry is actually $500 cheaper, and he could easily outscore Dame. So a Dame fade for Steph Curry might be worth doing in a few lineups. Uh, Clay Thompson, uh, I don't think he's worth it at $6,600. You know, he was priced in the 5000s before, but he's been uh, having a decent stretch he's, these last three games. So they raised his price to 6600 You know, maybe if Chris Paul ends up missing the game, you could pick up a little bit of Clay. Now, Andrew Wiggins. He had a decent game last game, so maybe he's worth picking up uh, in case he replicates that at $5,400, especially because they might need him to play decent minutes, uh, Garden, Tatum, and Jalen Brown. So maybe Andrew Wiggins is worth picking up in a few. But besides that, I don't really like uh, any of these other guys, even if Chris Paul ends up missing the game. Not much value there. You know, this this rookie, Brandon and Podzemski, I don't know how to say his last name. He's too expensive, $6,200. Uh, so I, I'm not crazy about any of these guys. You know, Kaminga, 5,300, that's too expensive for him. Uh, Looney hasn't really been playing that many minutes. So, uh, you know, I'm not crazy about any of these other guys. But anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and run the top lineup just to see what it spits out. Uh, this is absolutely going to change before lock, but I just want to see, you know, what's going on here. Okay, and you got Dame, uh, as I expected. Sohan, Devin Vassell, as I expected. Chris Middleton, I guess because he's going against the Spurs, he's uh, and the Spurs have a bad defense. Kelton Johnson with no Wemby, Nasir Little just to, just because he's only forty one hundred, like I mentioned earlier. And you got Zion under eight thousand, Zach Collins, uh, and then Nurkic going against the Blazers, who give up the third most fantasy points to opposing um, centers. So, you know, three sixteen is the total projection, which is a pretty pretty decent value for a four game slate. So anyways, that's all I have for today. So if you're not already a member, make sure you go and subscribe to Draft Time. You can sign up for a free 7-day trial.